Just when you thought the school board terrorism watch lists couldn't get any spicier, DOJ whistleblowers have stepped forward to report that not only is Facebook spying on your private messages, but if you question the government, they're reporting you to the FBI too. Because questioning the government is domestic terrorism and two plus two equals five. Of course, it's only conservative and right-wing individuals being reported, which is no surprise as Biden himself just came out and basically said that you're either with him or you're an extremist. I actually want to roll tickle to hear you say that. This has certainly been the underlying message of his entire administration. It's just now that he's saying the quiet part out loud. This was done outside of the legal system with no subpoenas and no due process. <laughs> Surprise! Not really. It's not surprising at all. Keep watching for the details. Hello, Liberty fam, and welcome back to the channel, my extremist friends. Today's story sure brings new meaning to the phrase in it together because uh, according to these whistleblowers, you and I and anyone else not a fan of Biden are really in it. We already know that the White House was flagging Facebook posts relating to COVID, so it shouldn't be much of a surprise that messages against Biden were flagged too. Because if you don't have enough points to have a logical debate with someone, you call them a terrorist. And the FBI needs a bigger budget, I guess? According to the New York Post, under the FBI collaboration operation, somebody at Facebook red flagged these supposedly subversive private messages over the past 19 months and transmitted them in redacted form to the Domestic Terrorism Operational Unit at FBI headquarters in Washington, D.C. without a subpoena. It was done outside the legal process and without probable cause, said one of the whistleblowers who spoke on condition of remaining anonymous. Facebook provides the FBI with private conversations which are protected by the First Amendment without any subpoena. It's corrupt. It's literally the definition of corrupt. According to one post source, they, Facebook and the FBI, were looking for conservative right-wing individuals. None were Antifa types. And yet they are the ones running around burning down buildings and kicking trash cans. Trash can lives matter. According to the DOJ source, the messages were largely from Trump supporters complaining about the election results. None of the messages contained any actual violent language. According to the whistleblowers, many of the messages were merely about staging and coordinating protests, which the last time I checked was perfectly fine and legal under the Constitution. And was perfectly fine and dandy in the summer of 2020. I, I, I want to be clear in how I characterize this. This is a, mostly a protest. Uh, it, is not, uh, it is not, generally speaking, unruly. Uh, what you're seeing behind me is one of multiple locations that have been burning in Kenosha, Wisconsin, over the course of the night. Largely peaceful demonstrations in the face of law enforcement. It All of this started earlier today with a peaceful protest at about noon just outside Seattle Police Headquarters. Other messages contained only photos of users going shooting together. Once flagged, the FBI used these conversations as leads to petition district attorneys around the country to legally obtain the messages they'd already been illegally given. Once they were given the green light, FBI field offices would then subpoena Facebook and would typically get huge files of messages and photos on each individual within the hour. Now, smile pretty for the government. These files had already been constructed ahead of time and were only waiting for the official request. The one good thing is the DOJ sources say it was largely a waste of time. Despite all of these shadowy backdoor dealings, the FBI found little, if anything, to prosecute. <laughs> they were allegedly hoping to find folks spilling their guts over their part in January 6th or devising elaborate terrorism plots under Biden's new definitions. I mean, they really only had to look as far as Portland or Seattle, but okay. 
In a move everyone anticipated, Facebook has denied these allegations. In two different, almost contradictory statements, a mere hour apart. Apparently, they didn't consult their PR team or weren't advised on enough spin in the first one. These claims are false because they reflect a misunderstanding of how our systems protect people from harm and how we engage with law enforcement. We carefully scrutinize all government requests for user information to make sure they're legally valid and narrowly tailored, and we often push back. <laughs> Sorry, that's a really good joke. We respond to legal requests for information in accordance with applicable law and our terms, and we provide notice to users whenever permitted, says Erica Sackin, a spokesperson at Facebook's parent company, Meta. Then the company released a second, updated statement 64 minutes later. This one was a little different. These claims are just wrong. The suggestion we seek out people's private messages for anti-government language or questions about the validity of past elections and then proactively supply those to the FBI is plainly inaccurate and there is zero evidence to support it, said Sacken, who we should note is a DC-based crisis response expert who previously worked for Planned Parenthood and Obama for America, who now sits at the helm of Facebook's communications on counterterrorism and dangerous organizations and individuals. Well, she sounds very fun. Notice, though, how the language about protecting users from harm and pushing back against the government has magically disappeared. The FBI says they can neither confirm nor deny the allegations, which is code for guilty as fudge. The agency did, however, acknowledge that they have a relationship with social media companies that enable a so-called quick exchange of information and an ongoing dialogue. The FBI maintains relationships with U.S. private sector entities, including social media providers. The FBI has provided companies with foreign threat indicators to help them protect their platforms and customers from abuse by foreign malign influence actors. But I thought this was supposed to be about domestic terrorism. U.S. companies have also referred information to the FBI with investigative value relating to foreign malign influence. The FBI works closely with interagency partners as well as state and local partners to ensure we're sharing information as it becomes available. This can include threat information, actionable leads, or indicators. The FBI has also established relationships with a variety of social media and technology companies and maintains an ongoing dialogue to enable a quick exchange of threat information information. The Post notes, Facebook's denial that it proactively provides the FBI with private user data without a subpoena or search warrant, if true, would indicate that the initial transfer has been done by a person or persons at the company designated as a confidential human source by the FBI, someone with the authority to access and search users' private messages. In this way, Facebook would have plausible deniability if questions arose about misuse of users' data and its employees' confidentiality would be protected by the FBI. So essentially, the FBI found themselves a legal loophole of a confidential informant. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, there really are FBI plants watching your social media. And here I was thinking it was only the NSA and the ATF. <laughs> Gotta collect them all. The more we pay attention to them, the bigger their file becomes. Really? How big is my file? That is it for today's video. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're new here. Drop a comment down below for the algorithm, and please consider supporting the channel, whether it's through affiliate links down below, the traditional crowdfunding options like Patreon, Subscribestar, or the tip jar, or the new spicy full semi-auto merch at my merch store. As always, thanks for tuning in. Stay spicy, and I'll see you on the next one.